Hey, this is Destiny. I'm going to start some videos on discussing some non-lethal self-defense options. But first, I want to pose to you a question. And that question is, are there some circumstances under which a non-lethal self-defense option is appropriate? I'm going to define a self-defense self as I am trying to protect myself against a physical or from a physical altercation. I already don't have the option of running away and it's, it's going to happen. Would a taser or pepper spray be a good option in one of those circumstances? I'd like to hear your feedback. With that in mind, I'm going to review a Taser C2, the civilian model. Here is the Taser. So you can see this little sticker on the bottom it means that it has a holster inside, but also that you can get it in different colors. Obviously this one's yellow, but it comes in silver, black, blue, red, pink. I'm gonna take it out of the box. Okay, so inside the box, is the taser itself. In here are the two live cartridges. This blue one is a chest cartridge. It lets you practice and it has the wires and probes that the live cartridges have, but it doesn't function with the electric charge so that you can get some practice in. This is the lithium power magazine. It's basically a six volt battery that powers the taser. And here's your neoprene holster. I'm gonna move this for a second. Some of the materials that come with the taser are some of the safety instructions, the user's manual, a training DVD, and then this is actually a target. So you can get some instruction on how to use the taser and then even get some practice with it before you get into that self-defense situation. This is the taser module, it's the taser unit itself. It's very lightweight. If I hadn't known that this was the taser, I'd say it looks a lot like a flashlight. And the fact that it's as small as my hand size makes it very easy to conceal. Now because it doesn't have the power magazine in or a live cartridge, I can show you here. Here is an LED light and then laser and then a laser for aim assistance in low light conditions. And the function of it is pretty intuitive. You reveal the target or the trigger button and press the trigger button. With the one power magazine here, it will charge up to 50 30 second um, pulses. And it's got a little LED here that'll show you how good the battery is. Coming from my standpoint as a biology student, I find the way the taser works to be really, or to be interesting. I will have a video in which either someone will tase me or I'll chicken out and tase somebody else so that I can give you a firsthand account of how the taser affects someone. But for right now, I'm just going to talk about the theory behind how the taser functions. The cartridge has two probes and they fire out at a distance of up to 15 feet. When they hit the attacker, the shaped pulse charge can jump through up to one inch thick of clothing in order to complete the electrical circuit. The way the brain works is it sends an electrical signal to the nerves and to the muscles in order to control regular body movements. And that happens and I don't even think about it. And what the taser does is the electric signal it sends mimics the same one that the brain already uses to control the muscles. And instead what the body hears is this like yelling of electrical signals that just says everything contract all at once. So the more athletic you are and the more tone your muscles are, the bigger you are and the more musculature you have developed, the more effective the taser is going to be because it doesn't operate on a, on a pain threshold like a stun gun does. Instead, it just interrupts normal biological response with how your brain or with how the brain normally controls those muscles. And because it is only interrupting and interfering with a regular body response, it doesn't matter if your attacker is maybe has a really high threshold for pain, or they're, they're crazy, or, or they're on drugs, or they're just fueled with adrenaline. So this electric signal causes all the muscles to contract for 30 seconds at a time. With every button push, it will generate 30 seconds of sustained electrical pulse. And that's different from 
the taser that they give to uh, cops or law or military personnel because that just gives them like that five second zzz, and that's why you'll see on like the the television shows where they'll char they'll zap them and then maybe they'll get back up or they'll keep moving and they zap them it's a different model than this civilian model the idea behind that is that taser wants to encourage the user to push the button set the taser down and just run away. And that gives you 30 seconds of charge to set, give yourself as much distance as possible from your attacker. And because of how the taser functions to contract all the muscles, when the person who is tased regains their, their faculties, that might be an additional, additional 30 to 60 seconds. If that's the situation where the user sets the taser down and abandons the unit, taser will replace the unit. For someone who can't use a knife or a firearm, or aren't comfortable carrying a knife or a firearm, the taser allows uh, is one option for non-lethal self-defense. That was my overview of the C2 taser, but next video I will have a demonstration of the operation of this taser. In this video, either I'll be tased or I will be tasing someone to be able to give you an account of the effects of what it feels like to be tased. I am not looking forward to this. So tune in next week. Same FOD time, same FOD channel.